What's going on, everybody? It's your boy C4 bringing you week number two of year three of the Philadelphia Eagles Connected franchise mode. After warming up with a big victory against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the very game, Jameis Winston, it exposed some holes. It looks like our secondary is going to struggle all season long, even though Jalen Mills and Marlon Humphrey had nine combined interceptions last year. The big plays from Mike Evans. Maybe it was just Mike Evans. Maybe we were just on an off day. But well, it's going to be tested against the New York Giants. They got Eli Manning. You got Victor Cruz. You got Sterling Shepard. You got Odell. You got Jake Butt. Really good tight end. Hilarious name. That is, He's a tight end. His last name's Butt. So it is going to be another early NFC East divisional rival uh, matchup. And we have owned the New York Giants. Carson Wentz in his career. I think we've only lost to the Giants once. Maybe not even have dropped a game. So we are looking like perfecto. Perfecto as it stands right now. So let's open up here. Big opening kickoff. Not exactly sure why this is happening. I think maybe something bad may happen. May or may not happen. Um, we are off to a hot start. Fletcher Cox looking to build on his 28 and a half sack season from a year ago. And there's, oh my God, fuck, man. Big old hit from Ryan McLeod. Jacks him up. I mean, this defense, it just feels differently. I don't know. I didn't really adjust the sliders too, too much. And I do have it in my notes that I'm finally going to get to you guys. An updated Sliders video since it is one of the most requested things I get asked on Twitter in the comment section. I don't really know why it's so important to you guys, but if you want it, I will show you what I'm playing with. Especially this year where, you know, I'm, you know, as of recording this, I'm a couple games ahead. Um, it's tough. It is, it is significantly more difficult. Luckily, I can still dominate with Fletcher Cox when I want to. It seems like, not literally when I want to, but it seems like I can. It's the secondary, man. Fuck. Like we got put like our safety is still good. Jenkins, McLeod, both those guys are high overalls with that. Just fucking soft ass coverage. Nice big hit there from Jalen Mills. But the I don't know what it is. It feels like we got Billy Davis back there at defense coordinator, and we're not running with you know Jim Swartz here. I uh, wish I had an answer. So one thing I want to ask you guys, I, I'm probably gonna bring it up in another video. But it seems like most of you guys don't mind the longer videos. I know it's like oh my god, he's doing it to make more money on YouTube because the whole algorithm with the videos. I don't know what it is, what they've decided, if it's 10 minutes, which is not me. I'm not making videos that are like 10 minutes, 5 seconds, or going fucking 30, 40, 50 minutes. Um, but a lot of people said like they want me to do live comps, and I get my live reaction stuff, and I totally get that. Um, and they said they don't mind the long videos. So the reason why these videos kind of suck, and I'm, I'm going to might have to break some news, but uh, in the coming months, I am not going to have nearly as much free time as I have had. At least that's what I'm you know expecting. So... Uh, just kind of deferring from the gameplay right now as it's 36 for the Giants. Would you guys mind if I did just straight up live comp? Just played this game as is and recorded uh, my reactions and stuff as it went. Just do a straight up fucking live comp. Just upload the video right after that. Almost like a live stream kind of thing. Like I understand, you know, it's not going to be the most professional quality now that I'm growing a bit as a channel. I mean, I don't have no problem editing a video. It just takes me longer to get it out because the render times are fucking horrible. Like this is a 20 minute video. So it took me, you know, roughly an hour to capture the gameplay. And then it'll take me probably, I don't know, it's not that long, 10, 15 minutes to edit the video down to get this 20-minute video. Then I watch this 20-minute video and commentate over that. So it's another 20 minutes. So we're at, we're at well over an hour, an hour and a half. And then I have to render the final video here with my audio, which takes probably another half hour, 40 minutes. So it takes me roughly between two and a half and three hours to do a video like this where if I just did a live comp it would take me the 50 whatever long the game took me to play and then just upload to YouTube so it would be easier from that standpoint and if that is something that you guys would rather to see would you rather see my live commentary over the game I would totally be up to doing that because it's less work on my end but uh, if that's not what the mass wants to see I may do like a trial I think at some point a trial episode I'm thinking if I do make the playoffs make that a thing maybe when I do a playoff matchups you know be it the wild card divisional championship or the super bowl maybe i just for those ones i just do a straight live comp so you get my real reactions i don't know maybe that'll be my trial for this but it's something i'm thinking about doing as jesus christ be popping here with malcolm jenkins make that guy do a motherfucking backflip i think that's jalen hurd the running back out of tennessee that they have back there now uh, in tandem with shane vereen uh, but that's just something you know if people really want my live reactions it makes less work for me but at the end of the day that's not like me trying to like oh look he's getting a little bit bigger or he's getting sick and tired he wants to get lazy i'm perfectly fine doing it the hard way and editing these videos down to get you know the just the highlights but it's up to you guys what you guys want to see maybe i'll make a straw poll or something like that eventually but um 
Give me your feedback about that in the comment section below, and I will say at some point during season three, I will try that. So you might, you know, usually my videos are between 10 and 20 minutes. You may, may at one point, one week, click onto the channel and see, oh my god, he has a fucking 45 minute uh, connected franchise mode video. That's just to try that out. As Victor Cruz tries to do the jump ball, and that is our rookie first round draft pick, Jamal Adams, breaking that up in the air. I just, like I said, I understand the appeal of both things. If I do it alive, you get my live reactions, and sometimes. Uh, they're, they're kind of funny. You get my rages when they actually happen. It's not, you know, I try my best to record the gameplay here. Fuck, I'm, I'm really shitting the better. Victor Cruz, they go to the same goddamn play. And Malcolm Jenkins gives it up for the touchdown to Victor Cruz. My apologies for not calling the game, but I just want to get this out there. Um, yeah, I get the appeal to see my live reaction stuff like that. That's why people watched my live streams when I was able to live stream, when I should be able to live stream again in probably a month, less than a month. As we had DGB for the nice gain. But then I totally find the appeal of getting a condensed version. Just the highlights. Enough to you know get your taste of Beast Mode TV and carry on with your day. So we'll leave it with the... Th I will at one point do just a straight live comm, a live video, no editing. And see how well that goes over. If you guys enjoy that. And if you're indifferent at the very least. That, that's definitely my preferred way in terms of making the most of my time. Is DGB takes the screen pass and takes it all the way that has loved the screen pass love mixing that in there especially with a gigantic monster like dgv how the fuck do you stop that he is he has been very pleasant much better than he is in real life um but yeah like i said you will see that at some point hopefully it goes over well with you guys if not i'm fine with you know saying all right this is not going to be the way we're going to do it and we're going to stick with this format here but there we go guys back finally commenting the game Big time touchdown, equalizing. You know the Giants got that touchdown to Victor Cruz. Looked like they ran the same goddamn play, the same playing like me a little bit, using you know the whatever plays work over and over again. I don't really do that a whole lot, but occasionally I'll do that. I have my go-to plays when things aren't going my way. That's probably the best way to put it. But Victor Cruz had himself a nice day. But look at that, Malcolm Jenkins gets revenge. Victor Cruz caught that touchdown pass right over Malcolm Jenkins' head. Took his fucking lunch from him, so there was a receipt. Malcolm Jenkins popping Victor Cruz, sending him back to 2009 when he was fucking relevant in this league with the forced fumble this. And good night. Forcing the fumble, giving us phenomenal position here on the 27-7-7 ball game. We want to try to get this snap off here at the end of the first quarter. Carson Wentz, plenty of time. Don't forget he can run. Uh, hitting Jordan Matthews. What a... F Man, this is going to be... Nice little, nice little uh, start to the season for Jordan Matthews. We, we, I mean, really, the last first two seasons, I think he's had a slow start. So it's nice seeing him finally getting his legs under him from September. Maybe he changed up his off-season routine, but I'm impressed. I'm happy to see that from Jordan Matthews. I firmly believe um, most Eagle fans can get behind Jordan Matthews. He's a fan favorite, even though he does, even though he does struggle for the most part. Uh, he, you know, he plays with the Eagles logo on his sleeve. And I, I think he will be, you know, at once his rookie contract comes up, I think that's in two years' time, I think it's going to be a no-brainer if sign Jordan Matthews. Hopefully we have, you know, um, either a Mike Williams or a Corey Davis, someone to fucking pair him with. That would be great, huh? So here are the trials and tribulations of my offense. We didn't run the ball well against Tampa Bay. I can't remember if it was horrible or not. But right now, we are struggling immensely to establish a run with Christian McCaffrey. And I'm a little bit worried that maybe McCaffrey was a one-hit wonder. Because he is just... I mean, I don't know, I don't really know if I want to blame it all on the run blocking. Because look, Carson Wentz takes off, dives. Didn't get jacked up as much as John Elway. But very John Elway-esque to get that rushing touchdown. His 10th of his career. Ladies and gentlemen, let's not forget, Carson Wentz can run a little bit. Mr. Garb Shots can scramble. Has a little bit of Michael Vick in him. Maybe his mom at some point... Uh, I assume their religious family went to a, uh, as Michael Kendrick hits a big time sack on Eli Manning. Maybe Carson Wentz, his mom, maybe on like a Baptist, I don't, I literally have no idea what churches do, but maybe she found her way down to Atlanta one day. Got a little tipsy, had a little bit too much holy water, ended up going to goddamn Waffle House, seeing Michael Vick. Maybe some, something would have happened there, some chromosomes, some genes getting all combobulated inside of her uterus. And then when Carson Wentz was born... He had just that strand of DNA from Michael Vick. That's what, it, that's what it looks like to me when I watch Carson Wentz play, not only in Madden, but in real life. That is my put on my tin hat theory about how Carson Wentz was born and raised. Then again, like I said, soft-ass fucking coverage. Maybe it's my play calling. Maybe I need to step on my play calling, but it just seems like there's just such a buffer zone between the corners and safeties. I mean, like Jalen Mills has been... I think he's an 81 right now, which is very, very good, but he's had fucking... Big season for me ever since he's been starting. Marlon Humphrey as a rookie had five picks. Almost defensive rookie of the year shortlist for sure. I don't know. I don't have no answer for why my corners are sucking ass right now. 
I know Jenkins is getting a little bit up there in age. That's why we drafted Jamal Adams. But Jenkins is still up there. I think he's 90, at least a 90 overall. But I can't, I right, as of right now, as of halfway through week number two, I don't really have an answer as to why my secondary is struggling as much as it is. And there was a horrible penalty from the New York Giants. Of course, I started this franchise mode day one of Madden's release, and I'm pretty sure I don't get any of the tuning updates that they do. So anything that was broken when the game was released because I wanted to be a fucking eager beaver and get this video out and this series started, uh, I don't think I'm getting any of the fine-tuning that, um, oh my, what the fuck was that 32? Looks like you just didn't want to make the tackle. Maybe that's why. Because I didn't get any of the goddamn tuning updates from EA when they realized every time they release this game, something's fucked up and they eventually fix it. Uh, luckily I get that for the expansion franchise mode, but not here in my favorite one to play. Maybe that's why. Look at this shit. You know what happened? Look, this is what happened. I switched to 32. I switched to him. He was controlled by the computer, and then I think I have the auto shaver. I don't know if that's what it is called. I think I have it turned off. So every time I fucking user switch to someone, they just stop running for a brief second. It's horrible, especially on interceptions. If I don't make a user pick, they always like run backwards in the wrong direction or some shit like that. <sighs> we still have the three-point lead. 17-14 ball game here. I don't know if it was I don't know if I missed a field goal for you guys. Sometimes I'll kick out a field goal and not include it because I probably dinked and dunked or had no great plays. And then had to settle for a field goal. I don't want to show my failures with you guys. But right now we're up by three against the Giants. But there, just look at this Ben McAdoo's son out there, I suppose, with the goddamn flow. Looks like Troy Polamalu out there with his first reception. I don't know if that's of the game or his career. Definitely looks like Ben McAdoo's offspring. That guy there literally looks like he would fuck a horse. Child pedophile. There's like a thing, like a meme going on Reddit, like just just trashing Ben McAdoo. It's like Ben McAdoo, 100% the kind of guy that has like a, like a bikini expector shirt or something like that. Official bikini expector. That guy's a freak. It's Odell Beckham Jr. Oh. Yeah, nice little dance there, you little bitch. No wonder. Fucking Brandon Graham dropping back to the second level in the covers against Odell Beckham Jr. My play calling on defense has been horrendous. But because just to play it safe, I usually just go by coach suggestion. I'm throwing that on Jim Swartz if that's actually who's there. Apparently it's just. They got to bring that shit back. They got to bring back coordinators. I don't know why they ever got rid of that. Why well, just have a coach? Let Jordan Matthews. Oh, baby. Landon Collins. Oh, fuck. You should be able to. That's not even Landon That's DRC. We all know DRC tackles like a baby infant. You got to be able to break that tackle, Jordan Matthews. But, big game. He's having one hell of a start to his season here, which is nice. It's DRC has four tackles on the game. Not a lot of offense, really. Only 11 passing attempts for Carson Wentz thus far, which is pretty remarkable considering how ineffective the run game has been. At least Jordan Matthews is hot. That combination has been on fire. Look at that. 10 of 12, 176 yards, one touchdown for Mr. Carson Wentz, which is looking nice. That's almost, we're almost two full games with a turnover, Carson Wentz. Now Wendell Smallwood is in the backfield. Let's see what he can do. Maybe he can offer a little bit of juice. Oh, there we go. There's a little bit of juice that we work in with Christian McCaffrey. Everyone, everyone was calling for in the comment section all through season one. A bit through season two, see more Wendell Smallwood. I went to Ryan Matthews, Darren Sproles, and after that was over, we went to Kenyon Barner, and still Wendell Smallwood was sitting. He was grabbing some wood on the fucking bench. And then, now with Christian McCaffrey, we have a two headed running back attack, and he's making the most of his opportunities. McCaffrey has been getting stuffed in the backfield every single time. Give the ball to Smallwood once, and he has a big explosive play like that. I'm taking notice. As Fletcher Cox comes up with the sack, but the flag is here. Watch this shit. Look at this shit, people. Look at this bullshit. Personal foul. Roughing the passer on Fletcher Cox. Like, can we get a replay of that, Mr. Referee? That was a game-changing tackle. That was going to force him into field goal range and make them settle for that field goal to tie it up and give us a chance to end this game in regulation. Let's get a quick little replay here. And that's a sack. Nothing wrong there. And let me just see here. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's a sack for sure. Oh, what? Eli Man can't do any more stupid goddamn, like, Boost Mobile commercials? With some fucking lug, some lug shoes on? What is, what's he fucking doing over there? Jesus Christ. No fun league. This league's got soft, man. I agree with Richard Sherman. This league's got soft, and they just fuck over the defense. So then, at 15 yards, they're now on the 11-yard line. Shane Vereen's had, for some reason, an incredible game by his standard. 72 yards, one touchdown, but... He's made, he's very, I don't know why. Shane Vereen, it seems like no matter what connected franchise mode, he ends up getting a starting gig. Him and Charles Sims, and they do good. But oh, no penalty there. 
getting Eli Manning. He's had a crazy look at that. It's fucking back to back weeks we have got lit up by the opposing team's quarterback. First week it was James Winston, and now it is Eli Manning. Twenty of twenty three with like two seventy five and two touchdowns. Ew. Maybe we just need to get more pressure with our front seven. Come on, Fletch. Then again, every time we do get pressure with our front seven, it's a fucking penalty. No harm, no foul, though. Holding them. That is that is great defense right there. Making a fourth and eight. Making them settle for the field goal in the tie game. Minute 37. We'll probably get it with a buck. At least a buck 30 with Carson Wentz, who's been not as statistically as good. <laughs> love that. Love my just my excellent use of my vocabulary. Very deep vocabulary. Hasn't been as statistically as good as Eli Manning, but he hasn't had a bad day at all. As look, I'm trying to do this. People keep saying in the comment section below, spam the Y. The jump is OP. So it's, occasionally you'll just see like a random fucking jump move from some of my players. But I haven't seen that shit. Maybe it will eventually come around to me and I'll get some highlight reel goddamn uh, LeGarrette Blunt like jump. But until I see it, that's the shit I get. Wendell Smallwood for, a, I don't know what that was, three yard loss. That's what I get. I don't even have the opportunity to jump. But yeah, we're in field goal range. We got Cody Parkey, the greatest kicker in this game. And you have the greatest kicker on YouTube. I think we all right. Wendell Smallwood going to the outside. Taking some patience there. Ooh. Almost fucked that one up. One second left on the clock. That would have been annoying. So what is that? That's probably a 50 yarder. 51 yards. Of course, it's super windy. 11 mile an hour winds. And then they call the timeout. Okay. Look at Doug Peterson. Look, he has a stick up his ass. So I have the weird camera angle. Oh my god, this is going to be horrible. Alright, and oh. Alright. Blair Walsh, everybody. I guess C Cody Parker decided to not. I, don't, I think we were perfect last year, actually, for field goals. I think we were like 30 for 30 or something crazy like that. So we're getting, you know, that miss out of the way real early. As we go to overtime and Giants win the toss. So now it's on our defense to come up with a big-time stop. Home to a field goal. Hopefully we can get a turnover. Get Eli doing classic Eli regular season and throwing a crucial interception. So now they're on our side of the 50. And then home fans, they get their home fans there. I know Giant fans are just lesbian Eagle fans, but you know they're still pretty pretty rowdy. As they hit 83, I think that's Jake Butt. Look at that. 24, 27, 318, and two touchdowns for Eli. Something needs to change in our secondary. We need someone to make some plays. We need fucking maybe I'm just gonna start calling in completely different defensive plays than what I have. This here's my one of my favorite defensive plays. Looks like we actually fucking audible it. Come on, Fletch. Right, well, oh, there we go! Who forced that fumble? Was that Michael Kendricks? Oh, that was the rookie Jake Butt forcing the fumble. I see you, Butt. Eh? Minute 44 left. We ain't playing for that tie. Let's go. Drop him back. Oof. Fuck. Who's that? We're going to Callaway there on 4th and 11. Not the best game for Carson Wentz. That was tough, man. Their corners are playing good. Jenkins, DRC. Fourth and eleven on the nineteen. Let's go for it. I don't give a fuck. Let's go for it. Field goal wins it. Drop back. Boom! It's short. As a first down. There we go, baby. Jordan Matthews has been E to the fucking elite. Screw Eli Manning. He's been E. He's been the only Eli I see. That's fucking elite. Big time catch. Let's go to this play. This is one of my favorite plays. Hopefully they bite. Oh, oh, that should have been a pick. Great accuracy from Carson Wentz. He is gone. Look at Jordan Matthews. Let's go. And that fucking does it. The Philadelphia Eagles beat the New York Giants. All we do is beat the fucking Giants. 2-0 on the season. Two back-to-back -back incredibly difficult games for the most part. The Bucks hang in there. But that is another classic NFC East matchup between the Eagles and the Giants. Another feather to add to Carson Wentz's cap. 145 QBR, 292 yards, two touchdowns, zero interceptions. Run game sucked. Uh, I'll let you guys take a quick gander at these stats. I think the last one we're going to talk about. Look at Jordan Matthews' day. 165 yards, one touchdown. DGB, 81 yards, one touchdown. That big screen pass to open up the game. But anyways, guys, that will do it for me here today thank you for watching another episode of the philadelphia eagles connected franchise motor this is your first time stopping by don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button 
smash that like button. Leave a comment in the comment section below, especially this week, because I want to get your feedback. Do you want me to continue to do this style, where I edit all the videos down, give you guys just the quick run of highlights, and I don't know what the fuck we're doing here. You guys are getting a little bit of taste of uh, some loading screens, some lackluster editing, if you will. Uh, but yeah, let me know. I want your feedback on how you guys want to see the format of this to continue. Uh, I'll be very, very grateful for that. Uh, but that does it for me today, guys. Thank you for watching, and until next time, it's your boy, C4, saying peace out. Uh...